So we want to look today at a passage from Ephesians chapter 6. We have been going through the book of Ephesians, and we, are, we, we will be looking at those first nine verses perhaps next week, but I wanted this week for us to focus on verses 10 through verse 20, and uh, these are the verses that relate to putting on the whole armor of God in our lives. And so I'm going to welcome you, if you would, to read these ten verses together with me. Here we go. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the blessed plate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We want to think today about this concept of putting on the armor of God in our lives, and so we want to look through these verses, and Father, we ask that you'd help us to make the personal application that we need to make in our lives today. I'm just going to note several things in these verses as we go through. First of all, it says, uh, this is the Apostle Paul writing, and he's writing from prison. He says to these people that he's writing to in Ephesus, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. It may be that we are weak in many aspects of our life. You may not be able to lift 200 pounds in a, in a clean and jerk, right? You may not be able to do some things that, would, that the world would then consider you to be strong. I want to suggest to you that even a feeble grandmother of 87 years old can be strong in the Lord. What does that mean? To be strong has with it the idea of of, of doggedness, right? The idea of determination. The idea of holding on to the promises of God with both hands and not letting go. To be strong in the Lord. It's His power and not our power. But all we have to do is to hold on to Him and to put our trust in Him and all of the power of heaven is then at our disposal. Be strong in the Lord. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. God has given to us weapons, offensive weapons and defensive weapons. We have a foe. There, he speaks here of the devil who has wiles. Another translation says strategy. The devil has schemes. He has strategies. He has a plan. His plan is not the ultimate plan because God's plan is infinitely more powerful than the enemy's plan. But we know that the enemy is 
prowling around. We know that he is at work both inside of us in creating doubts and fears and, uh, and compromising us by not being fully devoted to him. He has those inside strategies and then he has the outside strategies and if he can pull the wool over our eyes to, to be focused on them, we'll not be living in the power and in the victory that God has for us. But he has these wiles, but God has given us weapons. Let's look at them. He says, verse 12, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but then he lists a whole host of different entities, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places or in spiritual places. So, We could say, and we know, that the devil has a whole host, right, a whole army of demonic forces. We could cringe if we want to, but we serve a God who's the Lord of all of the hosts of heaven. All of the angel armies are under God's control. And and if there's any limitation to the devil at all, then God is infinitely greater and infinitely more powerful for him than him because God's power is without limit. Amen. If his power is without limit and the enemy even has a little bit of a limit, then, his, then God's power is infinitely greater than the power of the enemy. Therefore, verse 13 says, take up the whole armor of God. And we want to look at these. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. First of all, truth. We need to put truth in a high place within our lives. We need to be ruthless with ourselves in following what is true. Sometimes it's a little more comfortable to believe something that we know isn't quite true. God help us to be ruthless in, first of all, in telling the truth to people, to be honest, right, to be truthful, to be forthright, and not to shade the truth, not to embellish, not to exaggerate, but just to live a life of truth. There is a tremendous amount of power just in truth. That's why just, Tom, just the presentation of the truth of God's Word is enough to to release us from many of the strategies of the enemy. It's just hearing the truth and believing the truth and knowing what is true. There's tremendous power in that. And so Paul says, put on truth. That is, you know, the belt of truth. And the breastplate of righteousness. And this is God's righteousness freely given to us. We didn't begin our own righteousness, the Bible says, is like filthy rags. But God has given to us a righteousness. And you know, as we continue to hold on to His Word, some of His righteousness becomes our righteousness. We wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go too far in saying, look at me as a righteous man. But here is the truth. The longer that we walk in the, in the truth, the longer that we walk in righteousness, there's something that's not only given by God to us, but there's something that really becomes us. It's, it's a part of our character of who we are, to be righteous, to be people who please God by our words and by our deeds and by our thoughts. God wants us to be righteous people. And He... Can help. He is helping us to be that. So we give thanks to Him. Verse 15, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. One other translation, the New Living Translation says, that having the peace that comes from the good news that you'll, so that you'll be fully prepared. If we start with truth, if we start with righteousness, if we start with the presence of Jesus in our lives, where he is, there is peace. Jesus said, I give you my peace, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. He's given us a peace that the world can't take away if we'll hold on to that peace. 
Sometimes, sisters, it's a little hard to hold on to that peace when we have all kinds of chaos in our lives, but hold on to that peace that Jesus gives. He can give us peace in the middle of our fear. He can give us peace in the middle of our struggles and challenges. Peace, the peace of God. Let it be ours. We can put on that peace. Then the shield of faith, which with, with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So faith, put on truth, put on righteousness, put on peace, put on faith. Faith. We don't need to be people of great faith. All we need is a little faith, brother. The faith has a grain of mustard, right? Just a little. A little dab. It's not, it's not on our great faith. It's on God's great power. <laughs> and I wish I had that much great of grain that could say to a mountain, go ahead and be moved. Because it's just a little bit of faith would do that. Faith. May God grow within us that faith, that confidence that what He says is true. It's a bridge that we can walk on and that we can trust. The, the faith that God gives to us. It comes from hearing the Word of God. It comes from reading the Word of God, making what God says a part of us. Faith. And then take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. That's the sword. That's the offensive weapon. That's the offensive weapon. It's the Word of God. You remember that uh, it tells us in the book of Revelation of, of a group of people who overcame the enemy by the, the blood of the Lamb and by the Word of the testimony. What they said. The Word of God. We can take the Word of God. We can speak it. We can speak it to one another or speak it to ourselves. And that can become a powerful weapon as we deal with life and as we deal as we face the enemy. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always. I'm so thankful for one of the things that God has showed us in this fellowship, the power of praying together. I guess I knew about that before. But it's a wonderful thing to be praying regularly with people who are, and we're focusing on a similar goal. Persist, he says. Persevere in it. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Pray with the language that you know and pray with any language that the Spirit gives to you. Praying, persisting, being watchful to the end with all perseverance. And Paul says, pray for me that I may open my mouth boldly that I may speak boldly. Paul asked them to pray for him to speak boldly. I don't know what to do with this exactly. I know that God wants us to be bold. But Paul didn't say, you be bold. He said, you pray for me to be bold. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm wondering a little bit if sometimes it's okay for some of us not to be bold speakers. It's good enough just to be truth speakers. And to be and and for that to have an impact, you know, on our friends and neighbors and the people that we meet, God can use just ordinary people in that way. Paul was in a particular situation where he had an opportunity to speak boldly, but he was already in prison, and it would have been easy for him just to shut up. But he had these soldiers who were guarding him. He could speak boldly to them. Anyhow, we, I, don't, I don't know where to go with that. We can have a discussion about that. But anyhow, he says, I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. 
as I was thinking about this full armor of God, I thought about something that I learned about a few years ago. And this is a prayer that I've included here in your handout today called St. Patrick's Breastplate. So, you know, St. Patrick lived in the 400s A.D.s. God used him to bring the gospel to Ireland back at that time. This is probably not from him. Somebody called it St. Patrick's Prayer. It probably still is from the 700s, so it's 13 or 1400 years old. And it's a kind of a way of putting on the armor of God. So I thought we could read it together. I don't know, it may, it may not have the impact that it, it may be that some part of it might have an impact on you. There are parts of it that we're more familiar with than others, um, particularly the part that begins, Christ beside me, Christ before me. But this might be useful to you in your own putting on of the armor every day. If, if, it, if it's something that does something for you in a positive way, that's good. If not, just forget it. That'd be okay. But let's read it together. All, and it says, all men and women. So here we go with all. Today I put on a terrible strength, invoking the Trinity, confessing the three with faith in the one as I face my maker. Men, today I put on the power of Christ's birth and baptism, of his hanging and burial, his resurrection, ascension, and descent at the judgment. Ladies, in hope of ascending to my reward. Today I put on patriarchs' prayers, prophets' predictions, apostles' precepts, confessors' testimony, holy virgins' innocence, and the deeds of true men. Men, today I put on the power of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the fierceness of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the firmness of earth, and the hardness of rock. Women, today I put on God's strength to steer me, God's power to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye for my vision, God's ear for my hearing, God's word for my speech, God's hand to protect me, God's pathway before me, God's shield for my shelter, God's angels to guard me from ambush of devils, from vices allurements, from tracks of the flesh, from all who wish ill. Men, I summon these powers today to take my part against every implacable power that attacks my body and soul, the chance of false prophets, dark laws of the pagans, false heretics laws, entrapments of idols, enchantments of witches or smiths or druids, and all knowledge that poisons man's body or soul. Christ guard me today from poison, from burning, from drowning, from hurt, that I have my reward. Ladies, Christ beside me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left, Christ where I lie, Christ where I sit, Christ where I rise. Christ in the hearts of all who think of me, Christ in the mouths of all who speak to me, Christ in every eye that sees me, and in every ear that hears me. Together, today I put on a terrible strength, invoking the Trinity, confessing the three with faith in the one as I face my Maker. Amen. Let's talk just for a couple of minutes now as, as we go to the table and talk. We, we, 
know there are these various parts of the body of the uh, armor of God to put on. Let's chat a little bit about those, and let me just review them for you. We have, we have, uh, we have the truth, truthfulness. You might want to speak about truthfulness and about being ruthless and truthful yourself. Truth, righteousness, the righteousness that God gives, and that then becomes our righteousness. So truth and righteousness and peace and faith and the Word of God. Let's take a few minutes to share together. God bless you as you share at the tables today.